Good evening, everyone. How is everyone today? It's a nice day out. The weather's getting a little better here in Brockton in the Northeast, so that's good. Um, my name is Tom Minicello. I'm on the school committee here in Brockton. And I would like to welcome everyone and, and certainly thank you all for coming out this evening. We all know how busy uh, life is and um, the commitment and sacrifice you're making is, is truly appreciated. Um, what's happening um, here in Brockton, as, as you know, being concerned parents, is that you know, we, have, for the last five or six years, have been face, facing a very serious funding issue here in Brockton. Uh, for the last five or six years, our budgets are so tight that we can't basically afford to maintain what we've had for the previous year. It's, 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 it seems that every year we have to cut and cut and cut. Well, we've been making a lot of noise in Brockton, and there is a movement um, with other communities to lobby Beacon Hill, if necessary, sue Beacon Hill, uh, but to get them to realize how important our children's education is and the fair, equitable funding of that education. This, at the end of this week, there are gonna be budget hearings up at Beacon Hill, how are you, um, um, on just that, the funding, the budget. And what we wanted to do in discussions with the superintendent, Mayor Carpenter, uh, my fellow school committee members, we wanted to, uh, at the end of the week, bring with us letters, letters from parents who, who have seen and have witnessed firsthand from their children and you know what you've observed with, with school and their classes and their resources and their supplies and all of that stuff. Basically, have tonight an opportunity to write down um, you know, what you've experienced. You know, my child does not have enough textbooks. You know, the teachers are, instead of giving them a textbook to take home in whatever class you notice it in, you know, they're, they're the teachers photocopying uh, handouts all the time, and, and they're working on handouts. Um, my child uh, doesn't have a substitute today. Uh, he, had to, he or she had to go to the cafeteria because there's a not enough funding in the budget for substitutes. <coughs> Uh, my child's class size in whatever grade it is, you know, is disturbing to me. Uh, my, you know, my sister or brother has a child in wherever. First grade, their class size is, let's say, 20, 18, 21. And my child's class size is 27, 28. You know, these, you know, these are the types of issues I'm talking about. And, and you can certainly spit out, you know, five different things that you've witnessed in, you know, over the years with your own child better than I can because you're experiencing it every day. You see what your child's bringing home for homework or supplies or, you know, them coming home telling you about their day and, you know, and you basically saying to yourself, this isn't right. This is not right. So that's what tonight's all about. So um, I want to, again, just welcome you. Thank you for all coming. Uh, the superintendent, in her usual eloquent way, will sum up much better than I do um, you know, where we're going to go this evening and, and how things will progress. But that's basically the gist. We want to hear from you, the parents, in writing so that we can bring these letters at the end of the week to Beacon Hill. And you know, you, here, here's, here, Governor uh, Baker, this is how this has been affecting my child in the city of Brockton. Bing, 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 bing. It's not fair. Please fund us equitably. You know, our children, should have what the other districts have, the, uh, the opportunities, the supplies, the resources. It's not, uh, you know, based on our zip code, that shouldn't determine, you know, what we get compared to whatever, you know, other community is out there uh, who obviously is not facing these budget cuts because, you know, Brockton has been the one, we all know in this region, every year, layoff, layoff, layoff. You don't hear, you know, Bridgewater, Easton, Abington, Whitman, you know, Sharon, wherever. You don't hear layoff, 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 layoff. You know, it's, it's, it's us. And it's not because of mismanagement, misfunding. It's because they're not funding us enough. Because unfortunately, the state supplies most of our budget here in Brockton because of the, you know, economic situation of our city. Um, and, you know, we deal with issues that these other communities don't deal with. Um, you know, with regard to, you know, poverty and children that need more resources and, you know, much more special ed um, students and costs. Um, and these aren't things that we're pointing out saying that that's a bad thing. What we're saying is we're up for the challenge. We've always been up for the challenge. Just help us, fund us fairly, 
and um, you know, and we'll be on our way because Brockton, as you know, has a great reputation. But the problem is, you know, you can only go so thin before your, you know, your wounds, you know, your your your, your sore spots are going to start to show, and and that's where we are. So, again, I, I want to really thank you all for coming. Um, we need, you know, we need to um, go at this together, and we need our voices heard, and and you know, please in detail. You know, write all the you know all the things that you've been you know sitting there over the years saying this isn't right this isn't right I'm I'm not happy about this you know now is your time to vent and vent and really vent on that paper um, okay so thank you all for coming appreciate it superintendent superintendent Smith thank you Mr. Minichello and and before we begin I do want to say a couple of thank yous. And, and welcome certainly to everybody. I want to thank uh, Laurie Mason and the CPAC who had a meeting scheduled for tonight. This was something that came uh, on us very quickly and I asked her to change course. So thank you for those parents being flexible and understanding the importance of this. Also, I know we have a number of bilingual parents out there. We do have interpreters. So hopefully again, this is a whole community event where we really are all in this together. You also have, and when I do talk about the work we're doing and why we need you, as we always do, it couldn't be done without your school committee members. And standing here as a superintendent for six years, knowing how difficult when you're working together and in the most challenging situations, your school committee has put in hours upon hours. You have Mr. Minicello, Ward 1, and there are going to be some that aren't here. They're actually down the hallway meeting and talking about some of the issues that we're dealing with. They'll be joining us. But I know we have uh, Judy Sullivan from Ward 5. Judy, I know I saw Brett Gormley, uh, Ward 4. As I said, Lisa Plant is here from Ward 2, and Joyce Azak is here from Ward 6. Uh, and I know, is Mark here? Mark D'Agostino, uh, Ward 3. And I know Tim Sullivan, I believe, is, is on his way um, you know, to the event. So, so I want to thank them publicly and Mayor Carpenter who have spent lots of hours, you know, dealing with what we're dealing with. I also would be remiss and I just want to take a minute and say, um, you know, I've been your superintendent for six years and I think many of you know by my side has been the deputy superintendent, Michael Thomas, born and bred here in Brockton. He will be your new interim superintendent come September. So please welcome him also. This is a story that started a lot of years ago. And whenever I talk about 42 years in the Brockton Public Schools, I have to go back to the years as a teacher when we truly did not have curriculum materials that I needed. I was teaching special education at the time at East Junior High. And we didn't have the curriculum materials. We had laid off teachers. It was a very, very difficult time. And here's what Brockton did. They didn't stand idly by. They got involved, the likes of Superintendent Matt George that I just spoke to about a week ago. And we were reminiscing about that time where he got together superintendents from all over the state. And we ended up with what they call the lead plaintiff, a young girl at the time named Jamie McDuffie. She's now a teacher in the Brockton Public Schools. Her name is Jamie Milnamo and she's at the Kennedy School as one of our teaching coaches. And there's a reason that I say this. When you hear the Jamie McDuffie story, it's a young girl sitting at South Junior High in Brockton High School with 35 kids in a social studies class, kids sitting on the radiators because there weren't enough desks and chairs, you know, textbooks that were falling apart, you know, all the same kinds of things. And it's a shame that when you look at the McDuffie case that was decided in 1993, and what the case said was it should not matter about your zip code. If you're a poorer community, and many times your gateway cities and your urban centers, who are dealing with a lot of things that many of our surrounding neighbors are not necessarily dealing with, but they also have to educate their uh, population. And at that time, what it said was the state has an obligation, a legal obligation, to come up with the proper funding. And it is based on a very large formula. And I can't go into, I've been in, again, the district 42 years, six as superintendent, and I still struggle to understand that formula. But it takes a look at the type of children you have in your community. Do you have children that are learning the English language? Your special education percentages? 
are you dealing with children that are living in poverty, that could be homeless, that are, are moving from place to place, and you need to find some, some stability for them, and a teacher that can spend a lot of time where it might take extra time. Maybe there are summer programs where extra learning time occurs, extra days, or after school programs, all kinds of things where a community comes together and supports a youngster. And when Ed Reform came in with the McDuffie case, and Jamie McDuffie was the lead plaintiff out of Brockton, it told the state that the formula had to look at the community, and it has to give a certain percentage from state funding, and a certain percentage comes in from our city, which is called meeting 100% foundation. I'm gonna give you a very quick example. In Brockton, we get about 80% funding from the state and about 20% is put in from our city. If you're a wealthier community, maybe your community is putting in 80% and you're only getting 20% from the state. Every community has a formula. Once we reach that 100%, we are not wealthy enough to go above and beyond that 100%. You know, the mayor will do what he can if I need technology devices, and basically sometimes it's come to begging. You know, is there additional money as we start to look at what technology is, and I'll talk about that in the lives of our children. If you are in a wealthier community, once you reach that 100%, and like I said, it could be 80 from the town and 20 from the state, you can go above and beyond. And there are some communities that put in millions of dollars above and beyond. They want to have one-to-one -one devices for their kids. They want to make sure that in first grade, they have 20 kids to a teacher. That makes sense to them. They want to make sure they have the best research-based curriculum out there. They want to make sure that they have programs for their kids with technology so that by the time they get to high school and have to pass a high-stakes testing, they are able to do that to move on to college and career. We are not able to go above that 100%. They go above if they want to build a new high school. You take a look around you. You take a look at Middleborough, Stoughton building a high school, East Bridgewater, West Bridgewater, Holbrook, you name it, they've built a new high school. You know why? Because the baby boomers, the high schools we built 50 years ago, when we had so many kids back then we didn't know what to do with, well again, the buildings are 50 years old now. They're not 21st century buildings. And it's not that we're not paying attention to that. We've put together a committee through the mayor's office looking at every one of the buildings in Brockton, whether it's your city buildings, your police, your fire, and 25 school buildings, one being your 50-year-old Brockton High School. So we've done the work. We know that that high school needs a new STEM building, science, technology, engineering, math. And once you do that, you can renovate. We have 1,000 kids in every one of those four houses at Brockton High. You can take down the house and renovate each one of those houses to the point after a number of years when we as a group decide our city needs to do this with the help of the state that gives us 80 cents on the dollar for every school we build. We have to put in the other 20 cents, but is that worth it when we're talking about our children? And I will tell you, I'll never forget doing a presentation in front of the city council, which I do every year. And I want to thank the City Council because they have also worked very hard. The problem is they don't have a mechanism to put additional money in my school budget. And there's always talk about the Brockton families not having an appetite for raising taxes. I don't know about you, but I own a home. I've owned a home here for 35 years. It's the biggest possession I have. And when you talk about schools and people wanting to move in or businesses willing to come into our city, you want a literate group of children that are getting the best education possible. And when I really look at what the cost would be, and I'm looking at the surrounding towns, maybe your tax bill would go up $200 a year. You ask yourself, I, every day I buy a giant cup of tea, cost me almost two or three dollars. People go out and buy a muffin, a donut to go with it. You give up that a couple of times a week, we have a new high school. We're able to renovate and take the time to have a facility master plan <laughs> to do what we need to do for our children in the city of Brockton, just like every one of the towns is doing. We are at a critical point right now, though, and here's the reason, and I really apologize, and the people that came out tonight, you got a phone call on Friday, and I was on the phone with Mr. Minicello and a group of people probably about a week ago, talking about what's happening at the State House right now, and make no mistake about it, if you look back a couple of years ago, how many remember the signs Brockton Kids Count? 
I love it when I still see them on people's lawns in the city. And what we did at that time was the state came up with a mechanism where they wanted to count low-income children differently. It didn't matter if you brought a form in that your parents filled out and said basically that your family is poor, you, you need assistance with a free breakfast or a free lunch or things that help children so they're able to pay attention when they're in school. What they did was they came up with a new formula and it was called direct certification. And it was, well, if you're on a state program, if you get food stamps, or if you have help with mass health, if you're on a certain program, then we'll count you. If you're a hardworking family, two parents working two or three jobs, and you're still you know, under the poverty line, well, we're not really gonna pay attention to you. The shame of it is those children are still sitting in front of us. And that was millions of dollars that started out with our struggling budget. When you talk about two years ago, and when I talk about the hard work of your school committee, we started, and this is unheard of, a $16 million deficit at this very time two years ago, I think. $16 million deficit. We have a $220 million budget in the Brockton Public Schools. Well, what did that mean? What it meant was we had to look at technology that we had a plan to increase. Your 10th grade is up at Brockton High right now have to take in the next two months their high stakes testing to get their, to qualify to get their high school diploma by the time they graduate, they have to take it online. In a wealthy district, those students are on computers from the time they're five years old. They probably have two or three of them in their homes. In our district, many of the times, the first time our students see a computer is when they come to school and they're excited. They want to work on an iPad as a little kindergartner. They want to advance, and we have been trying to do that. But when you're facing $16 million, I have to look at the director of technology and say, I'm sorry, Dan Vigian, I have to cut $2 million from your budget. Uh, Laurie Mason, special ed, and again, special education students, we have a legal, ob legal obligation to provide the services we need to provide. So again, we have great ideas about how to keep kids in classrooms and support them so they're with their peers and we struggle to continue to give them that advantage. Our bilingual youngsters in classes, I have a, a sheltered English immersion class at one of our schools right now because again, I'm not a town that has 20 kids in a class and that's the same number I'm gonna have in June because we have kids that move into our district. They come from places that have strife they come from places that have had earthquakes. They come from places because they want a better life here and they come to Brockton. That's where they're coming. I have 32 kids in a kindergarten class in one of our sheltered English immersion classes. 32 little five-year-old children. All of these things are truly inequitable. So 25 years ago when we won the suit, the Jamie McDuffie case, and the legislature came together, your governor came together, your state legislators came together, your state senators came together, and the courts were working over the side. And they came together and did the right thing. And the courts were moving to tell the state legislature, you are gonna do the right thing. It's not gonna depend on where you live, it's gonna depend on a child getting an adequate education in every one of the towns in the Commonwealth. This governor has not lived up to that. When you talk about last year celebrating 25 years with Ed Reform, and they talked about Massachusetts being number one, and we work really hard here to be part of that dream. But it isn't, it isn't number one for everyone, is it? Not when you have a $16 million deficit and you're making the cuts to not only technology, curriculum resources we're having difficulty bringing on board, making sure that a town right now, if they have a first grade opening, they're already out there uh, interviewing first grade teachers. I won't be able to interview teachers to probably sometime into August, maybe even early September when I see what those numbers really look like. That is no way to run a school district. I will tell you, having been around 42 years, when that money came into Brockton with Ed Reform, do you think we wasted it? Absolutely not. You had a group of educators that came together. They developed programs all around this city. I was part of that. We had summer programs for 20 days where kids that needed that extra support came to a summer program for some fun opportunities, reading opportunities, math opportunities, 20 extra days of learning. It made a difference. After school programs across our city for every youngster that qualified. 
We had some fun enrichment and recreation activities, and we always focused on the academics. What do you think happened in Brockton? It was a district, if you look at that high school, that when we started to get to ed reform and the high stakes test that came in in 2003, about five years before that, we were seen as a failing district. Our youngsters were struggling. And within that five year time, by the time 2003 came on board, we were a story that they write about in this nation. And I'm not just saying that, an urban district that defied their demographics. Parents came together, we had field trips, opportunities. As I said, anything you can imagine, we were able to give our kids and our kids performed. They did an excellent job. We were written up in a US World News Report, I think the New York Times. Professors from Harvard were coming down and studying. Sue Sackowitz, our principal at the time, an associate principal, brought together her teachers up at Brockton High and said, we need to do better. We need to focus on literacy. We need to provide opportunities, and better they did. So we as a district know how to do those things, but we are at a critical point, which is why we asked you to come here tonight. If you look at things, Brockton certainly has really shaken the tree. Because we started complaining about this with all your signs that say Brockton Kids Count, and we have not stopped fighting and discussing and talking about what's fair for every child. And although I was pleased, and let me tell you when I wasn't pleased. So last July, when the state legislature finished their um, budget, we didn't get very much of anything. And it was very frustrating. And at that point, our school committee said, enough is enough. We are absolutely going to bring people on board, and I am talking about attorneys. Bringing attorneys on board to study the data, to see if what we think is happening is real, and it certainly is, and it's not just Brockton. You name the cities. It's Holyoke, it's Springfield, it's Worcester, it's Lowell, it's New Bedford, it's Fall River. Any of your urban districts are struggling. I'm not sure they've faced a $16 million deficit, but they are struggling. And the state's inaction is something that we cannot stand by and accept anymore. So I want new signs, and we've asked you to come here tonight, and I'm gonna introduce you to a group called Stand for Children, which is a state organization that actually had partnered with us and said we need parents, we need grassroots, we need community members to come together and to start to put down, whether it's a petition, whether it's a letter writing campaign, and I want to make sure that we have on every lawn in this city, whether it's your neighbors, whether it's your relatives, this is not exactly what it's going to be because we just kind of put this together. But instead of Brockton Kids Count, the message has to be for the state and it has to be with your vote. Equity in education now. This is when we've got to see the move. And one more thing before I introduce you to uh, the group Stand for Children is, um, Certainly when you look at you know, what has happened with ed reform and we talk about this happening now, back about five or six years ago, I was excited when I came on as superintendent because the state finally decided that the formula was broken from 25 years ago. And it never should have been broken. It should have been something that they were paying attention to for the past 25 years. And Brockton tried. Back in 2005, Brockton tried to bring the hand cake excuse me, Hancock case forward. And that was really saying the same thing, that the formula was starting to be whittled away. It was starting to have a negative effect on our students. The courts looked at it, and at the time they left the door open, and this is your Supreme Judicial Court of Massachusetts, and it basically said, well, we think the standard is an adequate education, and we think the state is doing an adequate job. Well, here I am in 2019 to tell you they are not doing an adequate job. Not only that, that four years ago, I, I lose track of the time. So basically in 2014, five years ago, they put together all over the state opportunities for districts, for school committee, for parents, for elected officials to talk about the stress on their budgets. And all over the state, myself and Aldo Petronio, our chief uh, budget officer, made sure we had a place at every one of these hearings. Didn't matter if it was in, I think you traveled to Springfield one night. All over the state to talk about the stresses on our budget. And the state, to their credit, came up with a report called the Foundation Budget Review Commission Report, which said exactly what I told you. 
special education wasn't being funded properly. Neither were low-income students being properly funded. Neither were your bilingual students being properly funded. All of this is in a report that basically tells you you need to do something. So here we are five years later. Governor Baker came on board in, I think, February or, excuse me, January of 2015, and we're still waiting. So the time is now, and again, I appreciate you all being here this evening, and I'm sure you can tell that I could talk about this all night, because this is something that we have been living. And when I'm in the classrooms, I want to give credit to the principals. And a principal said this to me the other day, and I'm going to call him out for just who said it. I was with Mr. Rogan from the Kennedy School, and here's what he said to me. Our little children coming in need to know that it doesn't matter if you're number 32 in the class, we want you here. We need you to feel a part of our school. We don't want children to feel the stresses of what we're dealing with. So our teachers need to come in every day with an attitude that says, you matter, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna do the very best I can, and I'm sure you at home are doing the very best that you can. But this is the time where we do need to kick up our heels, raise our voices, and whether it's signing a petition tonight, whether it's filling out a template of a letter, whether it's starting to make sure we as a community talk about, and let me tell you something, if you have not registered to vote, make sure you are registered to vote. Make sure your family members are registered to vote. We're, we're making sure those seniors at high school turning 18 are registered to vote, because you need to have that voice, you need to be at the ballot box, and you need to be out there as good citizens in this community talking about what we want for our children. So let me um, bring up, I believe, uh, I'm not sure who's got Holly, Sullivan, or here you are, Holly. So Holly is joining us uh, from Stanford Children and she'll talk about her initiatives. Thank you so much to Kathleen Smith, who's amazing uh, and doing a great job for Brockton. Everything that she said is absolutely true. Brockton has you know, ridiculously low funding, and yet you guys are doing an amazing job. Uh, she's really turned around this district and using every dollar to the best possible uh, capability. So, um, you know, the teachers, the principals, the school board, the superintendent are doing everything they can for your kids, and we want to make sure that the state uh, is doing that as well. Uh, so, Stanford Children, uh, we're a nonprofit education advocacy organization. Uh, we've been working on early literacy for a number of years and we really started to look into the data that showed us that there are some massive gaps, uh, opportunity gaps, achievement gaps happening in Massachusetts. Um, I specifically decided to come to Massachusetts to work here on the education issue that we have because of the statistics. And the statistics are just numbers, they're not stories, they're not people, but they are important. We're the number one education system in the country, number one. And yet, if you look at some of our reading measures, we're actually 48th out of 50 states for children of color, okay? So that means we have the second highest achievement gap in the country, and yet we're still ranked number one. So a lot of people don't realize that there's a problem because they're like, what are you talking about? You have the number one education system in the country. But they're not actually looking at what's happening on the ground. They're not looking at what's happening in the urban communities. They're not looking at you know, the crisis in funding um, between a lot of these different communities and what it looks like. So that's, the, that's where we're working right now. We realized that early literacy is one of the symptoms of the problem, and the problem is inequity. Inequity has a lot of different areas that you need to address, but you can't address any of them if you don't have funding. Right? So that's the very first issue that we want to address, and from there we can start tackling some of the other problems. Um, you know, early literacy and high school completion is what we work on, that's what we do, but we can't start tackling that until we get enough funding to do so. So we started working on this um, at least a few years ago, and just as the superintendent said, in 2015, the State House themselves, the State House came out with a report that said we're underfunding schools legally we're underfunding schools by one to two billion dollars across the state right and that changes depending on what school district you're in but places like Brockton are suffering more than most right so we want to make sure that places like this have a voice have a, a part of the discussion not only a part but are leading the discussion uh, and Brockton's doing a great job with that you've already been published in newspapers you've already had interviews you've had you know um, days up at the state house where you're you know taking part and being active and we want to help continue pushing that um, and we want you to realize that you're not alone 
There's plenty of other communities that are all in the same boat and we need their voices to join with yours because we know that one voice is not as loud as 100 and 100 voices are not as loud as 1,000. So back in December of 2018, Stanford Children gathered 1,800 handwritten letters from parents across the state and we delivered them to the governor's office. And we said, you came out with a report in 2015 that you're underfunding schools by one to two billion dollars. You still haven't done anything about it. 1,800 parents have written you a letter that said, this is what we're dealing with in our schools, this is what we're dealing with in our families, and our communities, and this is why it needs to change. We were really excited to see the governor come out in January and say this is gonna be a top priority, we're gonna get this done this year. Okay, great. He comes out with a bill and he says, hey, we're gonna have a, a funding bill, this is what it looks like. We also see a funding bill come out from the Senate. We also see a funding bill come out from the House. So we have three big school funding bills. And hopefully this is going to pass this year. We're not gonna to have to wait any longer. But we do wanna see what's included in these bills, right? We know that they're pages and pages long. There's lots of detail, lots of policy. Um, and it's really hard for people to get through all that information and really understand what it means. So we're trying to help bring that information to communities across the state. Um, if you didn't already look in the back, there's actually a pamphlet uh, with our PowerPoint presentation. I'm sorry I can't present it to you tonight, but it is printed out. Um, and it has a lot of data and statistics for you guys to look at, but it also has some information about the three different bills. So Stanford Children is one of the only organizations that's not backing one bill in particular. Rather, we're looking at some of the positives that each bill can contribute and some of the negative aspects that we don't like. For example, the governor's bill says it's gonna take about seven years for us to get to the funding that we need, the funding that has been promised to us, right? So that's a little bit too long. Um, our children are already gonna be needing to graduate from high school by that time, and that's you know gonna be a whole other generation of children that's gonna go by suffering from the lack of funding. So there are plenty of areas um, that you wanna look at, that you wanna get information to be able to write in your letter to say, hey, this is not okay, we don't wanna see this in a bill. But you also have plenty of areas that are good, that are positives, and we say, hey, thank you so much for adding money to um, you know, renovation and construction of new schools and schools that are falling apart. Thank you so much to uh, adding money for um, you know, after school programs or early literacy programs or whatever it might be. Uh, so there's a lot of detail and you're welcome to get as detailed as you want or you can just stay super simple and say, hey, this is what I'm facing. This is what my child is facing. This is what my community is facing. And as long as you fix this problem, I'll be happy. So, you know, get as detailed as you want or, or stay as broad as you want, but we do have the opportunity for you guys to write down your thoughts. Uh, so we have a, a blank template in the back that you can fill out, and we also have the generic version that was created by the superintendent's office um, that you can just sign your name on, so it's pretty easy. You can also fill in a little bit of extra detail. So pick and choose what you want to do, how much information you want to share and you want to give, but we want to make sure that you're a part of this conversation. Um, and that you're staying in the forefront of your representative's minds on how they should deal with this issue, right? If they're representing you, they need to know what you think and how you feel. Um, so Stanford Children has done a number of things thus far, like I mentioned already, um, taking letters to the governor's office, for example. Uh, but we're also going to be putting a lot of things together for the rest of the year because we can't let up. Just because they're making this a priority doesn't mean that we have to stop talking about it. We gotta talk about it more now than ever because this is the time, this is the minute, this is the window um, for us to really make a difference. So this is gonna change our schools um, for you know, the next several generations and we wanna make sure that we do it the right way. There's going to be opportunities for in-district meetings. So for your representatives to come here and talk to you, for you to tell them how you feel and answer your questions. Uh, there's going to be opportunities for you to go to the state house like this Friday. The hearing that's happening is a key moment. Um, it's when the education chairs of the House and the Senate are going to listen to the testimony of the public. That's people across the entire state, how they think and how they feel about these education bills. The three bills that I'm referencing right now are the three big ones. Um, and they're going to listen to you. You can get up and you can give oral testimony or you can write down written testimony, which is what we're talking about that's in the back of the room that you guys can fill out. The superintendent's office um, can take that up to the State House on Friday, the 22nd, um, and deliver that on behalf of you. Or you can show up in person 
and be there with you know a t-shirt with a sign whatever you want you could potentially be interviewed by the media if you're interested we can help set that up it's completely from your words and your perspective that's what we want to hear and that's what we want to make sure has a voice and has some power up at the state house uh, so the 22nd there's a flyer in the back if you guys want to pick up some information on friday the 22nd to come up to the state house um, other than that, like I said, media is huge um, for other communities to be able to understand that they're not alone, that they're not facing these issues alone, and that there are opportunities to get involved. We've done radio interviews, we've done newspapers, we've done talk shows, we've done um, TV broadcasts. Anybody is interested uh, to share their story or to give their opinion or their point of view, please let us know. Uh, we're in the back of the room, we have sign-up sheets. Um, where you can at least hear about what opportunities there's going to be for the rest of the year to get involved. Yes? Does your organization have a, a digital sign link, for, uh, such as Facebook, that we can put on our profiles so that we could have, I, I have about 1,000 Facebook friends. Mm -hmm. Could I have something like that that I could put up? Yeah, absolutely. So social media is the, the new age thing. That's where everybody has to organize these days. And we have plenty of opportunities on social media to get involved. We have a Facebook page, pretty easy, Stand for Children, Massachusetts. Um, and then if you click on there, there should be lots of opportunities to share things. Um, there's the easiest one, which is just sharing a link for people to sign up to our emails. Once you get our emails, then you can get some information, right? So you'll be able to see when key opportunities are coming up, like the one on Friday for you to RSVP and say, yeah, I'll be there. Or if you can't be there in person, to click the link to be able to write a testimony. So you don't have to fill out the one on, on the piece of paper in the back of the room. You can do it online. We have a link for you to write testimony online as well. Um, and then whenever there's going to be an event, if it's local to Brockton or it's you know somewhere else in Massachusetts that you happen to have friends and you want to share that event, we'll also have that available on Facebook as well. Yes. Lots of other districts. Yes, actually. Do you normally do the PowerPoint presentation? I'm, I'm shocked yes. that we, we're not seeing it. We all cleared our schedule. We're here. You know, it's really tough. But it's great that we have the papers, but mm -hmm. that's normally what we do, which is not tonight. Yes, um, we put this together really quickly, and we were really excited to have so many people show up. I think that I didn't even expect so many people from Brockton to be this active and this involved, so that is great. And we have plenty of opportunity for you to take action. We can absolutely set up an information session where we go through the PowerPoint, um, maybe at a separate point in time. Uh, but the information is in the back, and if you have any questions, I'll stay late and answer anything. Like, you know how Brockton Public Schools share stuff? Can we do something like that with PowerPoint? Yeah, again, we put this together very quickly. We wanted to get you out here. Obviously, the 22nd is Friday, and this was the first day we could even come up with to kind of pull something together. So, um, again, we can make sure that you have access to this. There are paper copies, but we wanted you to understand, again, that this is representing a lot of districts. You know, we're telling you, again, about the Brockton Public Schools. So we certainly welcome Stand for Children. We want to work with them as a partner. Um, and hopefully they can get a number of parents that become a very strong grassroots group from the Brockton Public Schools to start to do some of the community work that needs to be done. Um, you also have, if there are any questions, I know uh, our communications director, Michelle Bolton, is down the back of the room. Uh, so if there's anything that we can answer at this time, are you all set, Holly? I mean, if anybody has any more questions, I wanted to give as much information as you guys want. Um, there's like if you have questions on the information in here, please um, feel free to ask. We'll be in the back of the room. Also, we can pass around uh, we can pass around a sign up sheet for people that are interested to get to stay involved, um, you know, for the rest of the year and, and know about what other opportunities are going to be upcoming. Yeah, we can certainly make um, space available at any time if you'd like to have presentations. We we're trying to be respectful of your time. We had some things as a district we needed to share with you. Um, on Friday, as Holly mentioned, we are up at the State House, and I will be there as superintendent with a number of other superintendents from Gateway Cities giving testimony. So we will hopefully have, and, and, and you know what, this isn't our first time. We have done this every single year. We have been there speaking with the Senate presidents. We've been there speaking with the House of Representatives. Anytime there is a public forum to share the Brockton story, we are always there. And like I said, when Holly talks about the governor's budget, you can truly believe that it wouldn't have happened without parents and communities. One of the things that I, I didn't share with you is 
probably about a year ago right now, a number of the school committee members and myself went to Worcester and presented in front of their school committee because they share a similar story. We called it the tale of two cities. We then went in the fall and went to Holyoke and involved Western Mass Towns. Springfield was there, Chicopee, Holyoke. Same thing, they're struggling. It's a little bit different in every city, but pretty much the same struggle for their children. On the 8th of January, and this was brought together by a coalition where, again, Brockton is a big part of, and three locations on, around the state. I was in Malden with a group of the towns surrounding Boston. There was a group up in uh, Fall River, New Bedford area, and there was a group in the Fitchburg area, and we're continuing to build strong partnerships all over the state. So it really is, I believe, you know, grassroots starting out. And the only way that we got involved with Brockton in the first place was because Kathleen here is leading the charge. I mean, really, of all the communities in Massachusetts, no matter the size of the community, Brockton is always number one in the conversation. So you guys are really doing an amazing job already. And we're really excited that you're um, interested to, to stay active and to get involved, uh, you know, until we solve this crisis. Does anybody have any other questions for me? Okay. So we're going to pass around the sign-in sheet. Anybody that's interested, please let me know, and I'll be in the back for, for questions at the end. Thank you so much, Charlie, for partnering with us. Um, Michelle, do we have any questions? Um, pass around cards. Anybody, anybody have a question that they want to ask? Yeah, I have a question. I'll, I'll still stay here, obviously. Um, we do have letter writing. We have petition signing. Uh, you've got school committee members here to have conversation with. Myself and the deputy superintendent are here, so we're happy to answer uh, any of your questions. We had hoped to do it with, but go ahead, I'm sorry. Do you know what time on Friday? That's, I think it starts at 10 a.m., but I can't give you a time. I have gone to the State House and sat there for three hours. You know, it, it could be longer than that. So I can't give you a time, but I believe we can get it up on the website, but I think it starts at 10 a.m. Uh, we will do something, like I said, we threw this together tonight when we started to talk about what it looks like for the so-called lawn signs or getting things out there that, that truly get the message that we're not, you know, we're not going to sit around, you know, it's now, equity in education is now, not a year from now, you know, we have waited and it's not that we've been patient, we have not been patient, but, you know, I'm hoping that again, the elected officials are getting you know, are, are put on notice that our little first grader only has one opportunity in first grade. Our youngsters in middle school have one opportunity to get what they need to get to be successful. So um, we will look into that. Uh, we, we put it up previously when we did the Brockton Kids Count, we came up with a great billboard. We're actually looking to make that a digital billboard. How great would that be that you have continual, it's just such a great presence on Belmont Street. We have to go through a lot, but I would love that. You'd be able to see what's happening at the high school, all the events, what's happening around the city. I know the city council had even talked about an opportunity to share messages with people in the community on the uh, electronic billboard. So uh, I know our chief budget officer, we're having conversations. We have a little bit of a ways to go, but I'd love that to be something that I could tell you would be up there tomorrow. So we will definitely do that, sir. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a good point. Let me... I can't see without glasses anymore, and that's age, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so one thing I will tell you is I'm starting to prepare my testimony, and, and you make a good point. And one thing I'm going to tell you is sometimes this is a comparison that's worth listening to, and this is not complete. And you asked me about what our budget should look like. So Brockton right now, and this is again because of fiscal constraints, spends a dollar per pupil on classroom supplies while the town of Weston spends $275 per student. New Bedford spends 5,164 per pupil on classroom teachers, while Wellesley spends 6,974. Worcester spends 139 per pupil on professional development. 
teaching your teachers some of the newest things they're doing with instructional technology. Wayland spends 203, and here's my favorite. Brockton spends $3 per pupil on classroom technology, while the state average is $62. So those are just averages. So when you ask what our goal is, our goal is to make sure that we have a plan for technology so your children have one-to-one -one devices when they go into school with all of their materials on that laptop. You know, some of their um, books are on there. You know, whatever the teachers need to put for children to be researching. These are the kind of things that happen if you go visit a wealthier town. So when you look at the numbers that I, I just shared, the struggle becomes every town is different. And if you start to look at and go on to the website, the um, Board of Education, our Department of Education, you will see that Brockton gets from the state, when I explain to you the formula, probably a little over 12,000 per student. And that is a blended rate. That takes into account, we have a number of children that are English language learners, special education, children living in poverty, all those things that add to supports that you need to put in place so that child can graduate in grade 12, go on to career, to college, to the military, you know, to our workforce in Massachusetts, so we become a strong economy. When you are cutting a budget by $16 million, you're gonna be cutting teachers. We've cut 200 teachers in five years. And that's not because we lost a lot of students demographically in our enrollment counts. And when that happens, that classroom size of 20 in a first grade, all of a sudden throughout the district is up to 26, 27, 28. And then what happens if new kids move into the district? I don't have the money to hire a new teacher in the middle of the year. We have a budget that we have to watch every single time that we meet as a school committee to make sure we're living within our budget. So um, we can start to, I think that's a, a good uh, suggestion, is really taking a look at as you're, as you're trying to put together you know, what your concerns would be as a parent. I'm sharing with you what my concerns are as we sit with the school committee and do the budget. You know, supplies, materials, technology, textbooks, uh, updates that you want to provide in your schools. Every classroom in your district, every teacher should have a, a smart board a whiteboard where they're actually bringing technology right, right off of the website. They're able to have children do research and at the same time be on their laptops plugged into the world. That's what should be happening. And instead, instead we're happy when we can add, you know, five of those devices up at Brockton High. Or I'm pleased when I hear we're getting one-to-one -one devices right now in grades three, four, and five and continue to move on. I'm sorry, I'm just told that uh, Representative Michelle Dubois just came in. Michelle, I'm trying to see where you are. Oh, there you are. I'm sorry. Thank you. Our, our state representatives, um, I can't say enough, and you heard me start by talking about our school committee, our city council. Our state legislators and our senator are out there advocating for us. So I am very pleased, and I know what they're up against when you talk about a wealthy town that says, wait a minute, what about us? And the truth is, if we care about every kid in the Commonwealth, we want to make sure that we take care of our own, but we want to make sure that we take care of every child so that we remain a strong commonwealth, a strong state. So thank you for the work that I know you continue to do. Okay. Okay. I think one of the things you're asking me, if you have a particular, and I'm just going to give an example, tell me if I'm helping you. So in other words, let's say that we sit down as the school committee and it's going to take uh, $6 million to give one-to-one -one devices for every child in the district and to make sure that our teachers in the classroom have instructional technology. I'm just using a number. If we don't have that in a budget, because as I told you, the city has to bring us to 100%, 20% is their contribution, 80% from the state. So now you're going above what you have to do. The city council has to vote on that. And that could be, in, it could be something called a debt exclusion, 
where they say to the voters, okay voters, you're going to the polls, and we want you to put an extra, whatever the amount of money is, divide it over 20 years into the budget to fund education. So you are able to do that. What I hear all the time is there is no, no appetite. Now to be fair to our city, our city right now is looking at an infrastructure, and I don't want to get into city business, I've got enough on my hands here. But you've got you know, water, sewer, you need pipes, you need streets, you need, I could go on and on and on. I took somebody recently down Hillburg Ave that was visiting our district from the Davis School to the Kennedy. I couldn't believe how bad that street was. So, so I'm, sure, I'm sure you could all name your streets, we all live here. But the point is, our city has a lot on their plates, which is why, and again, I'm not here doing city business, but you know, when you talk about businesses, we need businesses in this city. We need people wanting to come and support our city so it supports our infrastructure, including our schools. But the answer to that is you should be talking to your city councilors. You have four councilors at large that have, I don't know if they still do, but I think they have meetings throughout the year at different locations. A handful of people show up. If you all showed up and said, what are you doing for the schools? We heard the superintendent speak. They're out there advocating. They're looking at filing a lawsuit, which the city council is in favor of. But again, if your voices say, what are we doing about a new Brockton High? Are we paying attention? You know, are we taking a look like the town of Abington, the town of, again, name any town, Stoughton, Middleborough, Fall River, you start to name them, they're paying attention to what their kids have in schools. I visited East Junior High, and I always call it that. I taught there many years ago. I love East Junior High, East Middle School. And I went to a, an event in uh, late August. And I walked into the auditorium, and that building is what, 60 years old? How, how old is East? 62 years old. And for the first time, I felt like I was in an urban rundown school because the auditorium seats were falling apart. It's just, it's an old building. Now, to the deputy's credit in our facility department, we're finding ways, as we speak, we're tearing out those seats and we're putting in new seats at East. But this is not the way to do business. This is not the way that he finally comes up with a little bit of money and we're thankful and we have little projects. Instead, we should be looking at the whole infrastructure and having a plan in our city. So there are ways to do it, but these numbers of people, and for, for however many people are here tonight, we have 17,000 kids in the Brockton Public Schools. I talk to parents all the time. I see your kids. I was out there Saturday, and let me tell you something. Your drama kids were in a regional drama festival. Ask me how many kids of color were in the regional drama festival. Situate was there, a couple of private high schools were there. This was going on all over the state. They came in number one in their region and will go to Boston, as they've done every year I've been superintendent. They'll compete on March 30th. This doesn't happen in urban centers, but it happens in Brockton because no matter your $16 million deficit, you've got kids that are excellent, that want to be part of, and, and for some of them, they'll go on to college in this very area. And you've got a school committee that has said, we're not cutting a child's only chance that loves the arts. I was, for the, I was there for the Art Awards last Monday night at the Y, and those awards will go on all spring. Your drama will compete against any child in this whole state. And when I go there on March 30th, we will be the only urban district there with kids competing, I almost guarantee it. And when you look at our music program, how many of you have been up there? We have spring concerts coming up tonight, tomorrow night. Have you ever heard, I can sit there and close my eyes and you would think you're at the symph symphony in Boston. That's how good your product is because the community cares and I know the school committee has worked really hard to balance the cuts and thank goodness for the band boosters and the drama mamas and everybody that comes out from the community. A lot of the businesses will support because we have always put a good product out there. So I believe in the people that live in Brockton, but if you don't have a voice, we're not gonna get anywhere. And I'm tired of hearing people don't have an appetite for taxes. So people need to have an appetite reasonably with what we need to do for our kids. And I, I'm gonna tell you one more story. Back, and I love hearing this story, when you opened up that new Brockton High School in 1970, and that was the baby boomers, that was when we had lots of kids, you had Brockton High, the old Brockton High, which is now the Keith Center on Warren Ave, they were on double sessions. They would have, and I'm not sure if I'm right about this, but 
the freshmen, the ninth graders, were in all your so-called junior highs at the time. And the 10th, 11th, and 12th, some of them would go in the morning, some of them would go in the afternoon, and so they built this beautiful new high school. If you build a new high school right now, some of the towns building them, they're over $300 million to build. Don't forget, we did talk about getting 80% reimbursement from the state with our projects. But the people in Brockton at the time, our forefathers, it cost them to build Brockton High in 1970, $16.3 million. We had a blue collar community. We still had the factories. That was a lot of money. And I thank them every single day because they had the foresight to build a beautiful campus. I think the high school's much too big. Maybe we should have had two high schools in the city, but they built one high school that had a swimming pool, that had beautiful fields, that had all kinds of labs, science labs, state of the art at the time. So where are those people willing to come forward in 2020? You know, where are those voices willing to say when some superintendent is standing here 50 years in the future, and I hope they thank our community in this community because people had the fortitude and the compassion and the whereby all to say we need to start doing something for our kids. So again, I know we've got a lot of work ahead for us. I don't want to take up too much of your time. Just quickly so we can begin. <laughs> Correct. Well, when you talk about an equity in education lawsuit, you name a real child out of the city of Brockton or the city of Worcester or one from every one of the cities. And these children are put up you know, in a lawsuit that basically says we are not, as a state, adequately funding. So it is a lawsuit against the state. Yeah. Wouldn't be the city, but of course, it would be a student from the Brockton Public Schools who stands for every other student. And it would be a lawsuit filed against the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Well, when that happens, you know, I'm sure we're going to be having many more. And again, there's already work being done because you have to collect research. You have to be able to show that you actually, you know, have the evidence, and you have standing it to go forward. It, it's not school money. It cannot, cannot be school money. The city can put forward money, but it cannot come from the Brockton Public Schools. That's a, that becomes a formula. So if, in fact, we were to prevail and the state says yes, you're not adequately funding your public school districts across the state. You'd fix that formula. And remember I said, they already have said under this Foundation Budget Review Commission report that they're not adequate, that it's a broken formula. Okay, All right. sorry. No. I'm sorry, sir. Well, there has to be an initiative. Like I said, the city does have to give us that 20%, and to go above and beyond that, there would need to be, you know, we need a particular thing. We need new schools, we need curriculum, we need textbooks, we need technology, we need facility maintenance. I mean, there's lots of things that you put together when you're looking to do that type of an initiative. So tonight, what we do need is for you to sign the petition, the letters that we will bring to the State House on the 22nd. We will have regular, as we go into the spring, as we start to get our signs, I'll never forget two or three years ago, I don't know how many of you were there, we had a thousand people on the football field at Brockton High School when we did the kickoff for Brockton Kids Count. So obviously we need to have much more information. We'll be sitting and putting together you know, our um, agenda with the school committee. We already have 
attorneys that are working with us, not just Brockton, a number of urban centers. So there's a lot more information to share. The most important thing is this budget goes through the State House right now, because right now we are looking at a $5 million deficit. That's a whole lot better than $16 million, but it's not where we need to be. So right now, I would ask that you write the letters, sign the petitions, and we will make sure that, you know, hopefully we get information out there for you to share with people, and whether we have 100 people, the next time we meet we have 200 or 400 or 500, and that's your grassroots organizing. Okay, all right, thank you very much.